Good morning. It's a beautiful day out there for your morning drive. So far, levels are about normal for eastbound and westbound travelers on the Crosstown. Traffic levels are about normal right now, but they're building. If you're headed north on 32, it's busy now as you make your way between Franklin and Moore. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Let's buckle you up here now, pilot. Hey, okay, Dad. It's busy right now as you make your way Don't south. tell me traffic is backed up this far. It's stop and go at best. Tell them I'll get there as soon as I can. Well, I can't help it. I'm going nowhere here. Roger, I'm not going to make it in by 8, not even 8.30. We're just going to have to reschedule. Allow plenty of time if you're heading... Expect delays of up to 30 Dad, minutes. Dad, when are we going to get there? Just as soon as we can, Jacob. Hey, Dad, why don't we fly to daycare? That's a great idea, sweetheart. Dad, this is cool! Wouldn't it be great if somehow our traffic congestion problems could magically be solved? But the truth is, we're stuck with a complex issue that offers no easy solutions. Effective strategies have largely eluded us up to now. And the costs are huge. For every one of us sitting idle in traffic, for society and the environment. The combined costs of wasted fuel, lost productivity, air and water pollution, delayed freight movements and collisions totals more than $100 billion a year. In large U.S. cities, congestion costs equal about $650 per driver annually. And congestion's toll on the environment goes beyond economic measures. Traffic congestion and our transportation system accounts for a quarter to half of the air pollution that causes health problems for millions of Americans. Uh, traffic and transportation also accounts for ro almost a third of the total greenhouse gas emissions that are contributing to the increasingly severe threat of global climate change. That traffic is reaching a critical threshold where it's unacceptable to more and more people. So we're looking for new strategies in communities all across America today. Our worsening traffic congestion problems are fueled by the fact that over the past 20 years, the rate of new highway construction has been far outpaced by the increasing number of miles we drive. In many circumstances, it's no longer practical to build our way out of congestion. The extensive construction projects of the 1950s and 60s have become too costly in economic and social terms, especially in urban areas. In some cases, these projects displaced entire neighborhoods. Other strategies like offering more bus and light rail services and developing express lanes for carpools are an important part of the solution. Yet they have proven to be no match for persistent congestion. The problem is, these strategies are enabled by themselves to reduce meaningfully the number of cars on the highways during rush hour. Studies show that our present roads and highways can handle current traffic most hours of the day. Then rush hour comes and congestion backs up like water in a kitchen sink. Just like freeway traffic, at low flows the drain can handle the entire volume of water. But as the flow gradually increases, a critical point is reached and the capacity of the drain is suddenly exceeded. The same principle applies to freeway congestion. Reducing the flow by as little as 10% can get things moving again. Recognizing this critically important fact, cities across America are exploring a new solution called congestion relief tolling. While it's no silver bullet that will miraculously solve all our congestion problems, 
It's a promising approach that complements traditional strategies. Congestion relief tolling charges drivers variable fees for using the highways. The tolls change based on the amount of traffic, with higher rates charged during rush hour. On most days, a significant number of the cars jamming the highways at rush hour aren't traveling to or from work. Variable tolls encourage these drivers to travel when fewer cars are on the road. This improves conditions for everyone else. Also, incentives like reduced tolls or free passage for carpools and buses encourages commuters to use these options. Adding more traditional toll booths during rush hour would only worsen congestion by slowing traffic. But now tolls can be varied and collected electronically, with vehicles moving at normal highway speeds. Signals from electronic transponders mounted on the dashboard of each car are read by overhead devices that automatically charge fees to drivers. The varying rates are prominently displayed to avoid any surprises. Variable pricing, the economic tool congestion relief tolling uses to control the demand for limited highway space, is a concept that's familiar to everyone. Telephone rates are higher during weekdays than evenings. Airline and train travel cost more during prime travel times. Public utility costs fluctuate according to demand. Restaurants, hotels, theaters, and downtown parking rates go up when demand is highest. This tool provides more options and better service to everyone. And we accommodate our buying habits accordingly without thinking twice. In San Diego, Houston, Fort Myers and Orange County, California. Variable pricing is being used to reduce congestion while meeting a variety of community needs. San Diego's project makes use of existing carpool lanes on an eight-mile stretch of Interstate 15. These lanes were underused while traffic during rush hour clogged the regular lanes. Now on I-15, carpools and buses travel free, while solo drivers can buy access to the express lanes. People willing to pay a premium for prompt, reliable travel can do so, while travelers in the adjacent lanes experience less congestion. Project revenues improve bus service and carpool facilities along the I-15 corridor. People wish to use the carpool lane as a single driver. The revenues from their usage will go towards more buses in that part of the city, more bus routes to farther away places than they have them now, and that's going to be a help to those of us who live there. Houston is applying the same concept to the underused carpool lanes on the congested Katy Freeway. In Fort Myers, variable tolling on several toll bridges provides an incentive for drivers to travel during less crowded times. Near Los Angeles, congestion relief tolling was an essential ingredient in the creation of a new 10-mile private toll road in the median of the highly congested State Route 91. SR-91's four new express lanes, known to users as Fast Track, opened in December 1995 as the world's first completely automated toll road. The project's success has been notable. Carpooling on SR-91 increased 18 percent in the first six months. Commuters using the express lanes never experienced delays, and congestion on the adjacent lanes has been significantly reduced. Uh, before the toll road, my 22-mile commute in the morning could take me anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Once I started utilizing the toll road, that commute time was cut down to like 25 to 30 minutes a day. I'm away from my kids all day as it is, and it's very hard to leave them, and I just look forward to coming back to pick them up. And if I can save an extra 30 minutes or 45 minutes of being on the freeway, it just gets me to the kids that much faster. These cities aren't the only places in the U.S. that are involved with congestion relief tolling. More than 10 other communities have pilot projects underway or are exploring the concept. In these cities, concerns about congestion relief tolling, such as it being elitist or the perception that citizens are being charged for a public service they've already paid for, are being addressed by involving community groups and businesses early in the decision-making process. I think one of the keys to this whole concept is that it is a grounds-up approach. The public is involved in the decision-making. They decide where the uh, 
tolling is to occur. They decide how the revenues are, are to be spent. And effectively, you've got to go to your neighborhoods, you've got to go to your, uh, your stakeholders, you've got to go to the people that are decision makers, and you have to give them the tools and let them make the decision so they have ownership in what has happened. And when you do that, you have successful projects. With effective public involvement, the benefits of this strategy are widespread. Um, in the last four years, utilizing the Fast Track as a small business owner, it has really helped me economically as uh, controlling costs, uh, keeping customer satisfaction at a higher level, and keeping the technicians happy by not sitting on the freeway. Sometimes it was difficult without the toll lane to get home in a set period of time. One accident could delay your travel or commute home anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And with the daycare provider I had, her day ended at 5.30. But when you're late or you arrive late, they have a late fee they assess per child. And at $5 per minute per child, that can get exorbitant. One time, I spent almost $90 for being late one time because I got stuck on the freeway. Congestion relief tolling isn't the final answer to all our traffic woes. But in many cases, combining this tool with other strategies gives commuters a new option that can significantly reduce the traffic jams clogging our highways from coast to coast. Less congestion means increasing our productivity and reducing our use of fossil fuels. It means we get greater value from the money spent on our highways leaving us with more money for enhancing the qualities that make our cities great places to live. Finally, less time spent in gridlock means more time for the things in our lives that are most important. Hey Dad, you made it in time for the game!